If you cut your loops wrong, if they're not in time, if you don't know how to use the different part of the loop properly, you're gonna have a bad time and a bad beat. Good news is this video is gonna give you the ultimate guide to using loops properly in FL Studio. You're gonna learn everything you need to know about cutting loops, using loops, getting the right key of your loop and making sure your loops never slip out of sync. Very, very important. Before we jump right into this bouncy castle, I've got a question for you. Question is, if you pitch a loop up or down, how do you know what key you've changed your loop to? Comment down below with your answer. If you don't know, don't worry because I will be revealing the answer to this question later in the video. So stay tuned. Let's get into it. Quickly, this video was suggested by Gennaro Music. So shout out to him. If you want to get a shout out in my next video, comment down below with a video idea. If it's good i'll create it shout you out win-win for you you get a video you want and you get shouted out in the video free promo all good all around these loops are from my trap guitar secrets loop pack and we're just gonna get started so let me pick a loop real quick as our example uh, let's pick green cheese shall we sounds interesting pink sweat sounds very interesting as well i haven't listened to these loops in ages i think i made this like a year ago so let's see what's up we'll just drag this in and here's our full loop now the first thing you want to do when you've got a new loop is you want to set the right tempo so as you can see this is a loop at 120 so let's set our right tempo to 120 and we can just cut this off here so that it's perfectly looped where it's supposed to be as you can see it goes to 65 another way you can detect the loop if the loop does not come labeled with its bpm by the way if you have been downloading loops and they don't come labeled with the bpm find a different place to download loops you don't want to be downloading from wherever you're downloading because they're trash okay that's the truth but let's just say you've downloaded a loop it's fire you don't know what the bpm is this is how you find it you go to the top left hand corner of the loop and then click and then come down here and go to detect tempo this will show you the bpm that the loop is most likely to be if it came with tempo information embedded like this loop it will be automatically correct over here if not you may want to pick one of these ranges that you think it's most likely to be you can pick 70 to 150 or about 100 to 200 those should get it. so let's pick 100 to 200 and it says the sample the tempo for the sample has been detected as 119.9 i would round it up and go to the nearest number and that goes to 120 so i'm not going to adjust that but if we do go in here and we go to detect tempo once you've got that information you then want to go to type in bpm so as you can see it's 120 and then we click the accept button the reason why we did that is so that fl studio knows that this loop is in 120 this is something you'd have to do if it didn't already have the tempo information embedded okay the reason why you want to do that is so you can change this to any tempo you want for example if we want to change this to 140 i'll show you how to do that but first let's listen to this loop so you can hear what's going on make sure you do like an eight bar or four bar loop to hear that it loops around really really quickly and let's listen back loops perfectly now if we was to change this to 140 like so and play this back this is what it sounds like does not loop properly and is the exact same tempo as before because this has done nothing in order to actually fit this to our tempo that we want it to be we click left hand corner again and go to fit to tempo here it will ask us to select the tempo or bpm that the loop is in we've already got that it's 120 so we can just click that or we can go to type in bpm as i showed you before so we click 120 and this will fit our loop to the tempo so make sure you got a loop like this so you can hear it back and make sure that it is looping correctly let's play this back and it should be in 140. perfect loop okay that's how it's done now there's another way to find a loop you can do this manually generally to do this you create a four or eight bar loop like i've done so here and then you'll have to manually stretch the loop to loop within this bar loop limit that you set i'm not going to show you how to do this in this particular video because that will take ages instead go and watch my video on how to find the tempo of any song and that will show you how to do that it will walk you through the entire process it takes a while but it will show you how to do that manually if you've downloaded a loop that doesn't have any tempo information you can't find it 
using the methods that I've shown you and you're having a tough time, that is the next method you'd want to go to. The next thing you want to do is find the key of the loop. Now, most good loops that you will download will have your loop labeled by key. This is very, very common. So if you're downloading a loop pack and it's not labeled by key, bitch that producer, stop downloading from them. But if you've done that, <laughs> I'm going to show you how it's done regardless, okay? This is what you need to do. Open up your browser, go to TuneBat dot com forward slash analyzer there are probably other websites that do this as well you could just google song key finder and hopefully you'll find something that works for you but i found this one for you so what's the point of going through all that work now i'm going to show you how this works you could basically drag and drop your loop in here remember this loop is in g minor because i label my loops very well <laughs> just so you know and I, I give you the stem so you don't really have to worry about Pretty much anything is very, very convenient if you download loops from me. Regardless, let's drag this into this website and see what they give us. Now, it may give us the right key, G minor, perfect, and it gave us the BPM, beautiful, yeah? This is exactly what we want. Now, sometimes when you use services like this, they may tell you the relative major or the relative minor, depending on what kind of loop you're using. If you're using loops that you're going to be using for trap songs and whatnot, they'll generally sound sadder, more somber in tone those will generally be in minor if you use one of these services and it tells you that something that sounds somber and sad in tone is actually a major key the likelihood is it's telling you the relative major to that key now in order to find the minor that it actually is you need to use the circle of fifths do i do i still have the circle of fifths as my background let me check no i do not okay so go to google circle of fifths type that in get one of these yeah it really doesn't matter which one you pick they're all pretty much the same these are you know these are things you can buy i don't know why you buy that but regardless here's the circle of fifths find the major that it's talking about for example here's g minor the major would be b flat major okay so basically you look at the major and then in here would be the minor so if it said it's b flat major you just look inside and you see that it's actually G minor. Easy, easy peasy. I suggest you download the Circle of Fifths, have it on your desktop, have it somewhere that's easily accessible, even print it out, put it on your wall. It's gonna help you out a lot when it comes to music theory and production. It's definitely a great tool to have. So we found the key, we have found the tempo. We are ready to use our loop. Step number three is to set your playlist snap to bar. So come over here, you see this snap, go to bar. The reason you wanna do this is because if you're cutting this loop up, you don't want to have it on like, half beat or whatever because you may make a mistake you may accidentally cut it a little bit more or a little bit less than you actually want it to and then if you do something like that when you're using this loop down the road you're going to encounter issues where your loop will start slipping out of sync so make sure you snap it to bar this will just make everything a whole lot easier dealing with your loop on the grid generally when you're downloading a loop it will come like this in a full loop and you'll need to cut it up in order to get the separate sections that you want to use with it sometimes when you download a loop you will get the stems like in my loop packs but this isn't very common so you will need to learn to cut it up so pay attention because i'm going to show you how to do that in the next step before we get into that if you want to learn how to create your own trap beats from scratch you want to go through an easy nine step formula join my free trap course link down below go to jcarteray.com forward slash free trap course that will walk you through my easy nine step formula on how to make trap beats from creating the melody all the way to mastering it go and join that it's completely free at the moment you've got nothing to lose out why not it's not going to be free forever don't miss out let's get back into the video so let's cut this up generally you're going to want to cut this up in eight bars or four bars depending on the loop i believe in my loops i'm doing them in eight bar sections so this is the chorus this is the second half of the chorus generally then we'll have the verse so let's listen back yeah so the chorus repeats twice then we've got a verse section that repeats twice as well goes to eight bars because i've just laid this out like how you'd lay out a song chorus verse pre-chorus and then back to the chorus okay so you want to listen through to the loop first of all to see where the different sections are i know where the sections are because i made this loop and i'm using shift on the right hand side of my control keypad and left click in order to cut okay and because we already changed this to snap to bar we're not going to be creating any mistakes that would mess us up and if we do accidentally cut like over here we can clearly see where that is so let's play this back this is still the verse next what do we have sounds like more verse sounds like a 12 bar verse 16 bar verse i guess 
and then this sounds like the guitar by itself. Let me quickly check. Yeah, this is the guitar by itself. And then the verses were just the pad by itself. So this is a very simple loop. It's just the pad and the guitar. So in the verses, we've got the pad. And then in the chorus, we've got the pad and the guitar working together. And then at the end, we've just got the guitar. If we want in the section with just the guitar. So with this, we can then move stuff around and basically change this up and do what we want with the loop and change the structure to the structure that we want for our beat. So that's how that's done. And that's basically step number five. You've got the freedom to do everything you want with the beat. Super easy peasy, basically done. But I've got one more step just in case you want to get extra creative, okay? If you want to get extra creative, step number six is to use the fruity slicer. So I'm going to quickly show you how that's done. So let's Let's load up Fruity Slicer. This will enable you to make a different melody from the loop and basically change it up. Now, we don't want to use this entire loop to do this. We're better off just using the chorus section. So let's actually do an eight bar loop like so. And what we can do is I'm going to use my tried and true method of bouncing everything down. So I set my loop points. I'm going to press Control Alt C and I'm going to bounce this down. Use these settings. Click start and this is going to bounce us to a loop like this. So now we bounce it down. We can click over here, go to make unique as sample. And we're basically just doing this so that we can save it in a place so that we can easily get back to it. So let me go back to where my samples are stored and we'll save it over this one. Place that. And now we can open a sample by clicking this button, go to load sample, and then we can go right back to where we just was. And here we have our sample. Now we want to set the way it's sliced. Click over here on the slicing, and then we can slice it by beat like so. Or we can slice it by four beat. Oh, that's way too much. Let's just slice it by beat. This is actually more than we needed, I guess. We could have done way less. Ah, this is like a 16 bar loop. I should have done an eight bar. My bad i was meant to do eight bar regardless we can just copy over in it and then we can click over here to dump it to the piano roll let's go to normal and then we can go in here and let's actually stay within this eight bar loop because we don't need to be doing all this longness even a four bar loop could do it pretty well and then let's play it back go to pan so at this point we can just move stuff around in order to make a different melody so we can move this that works this sounds a little bit low though mm, let's turn it up a little bit Turn on the decay to prevent the sample from clicking so much. And then we can mess with the attack to kind of fade it in. That actually sounds pretty interesting still. <laughs> That actually sounds pretty interesting. I don't know about this one. Uh, I mean, this one. Yeah. Yeah, that works. And then this... I don't know. I can't be bothered. I can't be bothered to do all of this. But this is the example that I'm showing you how it's done. Straight up. You can get in here and do what you want. It's basically, you know, trying and error, figuring it out, seeing what you come up with and seeing what sounds good. And then, you know, you've got your sample. And what I could do is I could just paste this down, paste this pattern down, and then bounce this down into a new sample, like how we did before. Control Alt C. Really, I should have normalized that sample before even doing any of this, but let's just back. Pretty interesting. Now, it's time to answer the question that I asked you earlier on in the video. That question was, if you pitch a loop up or down, how do you know what key it's in? The answer is, use the keyboard. It's very, very easy. Let me show you how this is done. So, for example, let's pitch this loop up. Remember, it's starting in G minor. Let's pitch it up mm, 300 cents. What key do you think this is? Ah. 
I know because I've done this a, a few times, it's going to be an A minor. Okay. Now, how do I know this? Because I've used the keyboard. So if we start in G, this will be G minor. Each hundred cents is one semitone. That is one note moved on the keyboard. Okay. So G, if we move it up one, that is G sharp minor. Move it up two, that's A minor. Move it up three that's a sharp minor so i got it completely wrong it's not a minor <laughs> it's a sharp minor <laughs> look at me thinking i knew what was going on <laughs> i did not know i need to use the keyboard as well so this is how you get it right without getting it wrong without messing up and assuming that it's something and then realizing everything sounds off so g 100 200 300 that's how it's done so we're currently in a sharp minor if we move up 400 where where do we go that's right b minor This sounds interesting, bro. Oh, I need to use Fruity Slicer some more. I, I never really use Fruity Slicer. But that's how it's done. If you need more information on how to transpose, watch my videos on transposing. That will help you out a lot, teach you more in-depth stuff about transposing, and how to find the key and all that sort of stuff. Now, let's quickly recap. First thing you want to do, find the tempo for your loop, fit it to your project tempo, or change the project tempo to fit your loop. Second thing you want to do, find the key of your loop. Third thing you want to do, set your project snap to bar. Fourth thing you want to do, cut up your loop. Fifth thing is you have the freedom to now change the structure and use the loop as you want. Sixth thing is use FL Slicer, Fruity Slicer, and get creative. Change the loop. This is especially important if you're downloading a loop from a place where a lot of people have downloaded a loop and you want to put your extra custom unique source on it. This will help you do that. Now, if there are any questions you want me to answer or any videos you want me to make, please let me know in the comment section down below. You might get a shout out in my next video. Check out that video and check out the links in the description. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.